The king is trying to have you assassinated. Your girlfriend just got captured. This crow figure really hates you. What are you gonna do? Vengeance for your parents' death is on your mind. Let's see if Teen can break out from this cycle of hatred and save his girlfriend in this condensed version of Ongbok 3. The film begins with Tien being captured and awaiting torment until demise. Two individuals hold his chains while several others strike him with a pole. Preventing him from collapsing, soldiers prop him up with the extra remaining pole. The king orders his men to shatter every bone in his body and send him to join his father in hell. Stirred up by hearing his father's name, Tien retaliates with fury, breaking free from the men restraining him. He turns the tables by wielding the chains to strike back. Despite his feet being chained, he pulls the chains back to his wrist and prepares for the next onslaught. Evading the pole strikes this time, he counters with a barrage of his own, decimating the enemies. However, even as he vanquishes the soldiers, more continue to arrive. His fight seems futile as his stamina wanes, yet he persists, battling until the sun fades, only then succumbing when struck in the chest. Later, we witness the king descending into madness, haunted by the voices cursing him to meet a grim demise. He experiences a flashback to a sacred ceremony. During the ritual, priest invokes protection for the loyalty, but condemns the betrayers to a cursed fate. As they drink to conclude a ceremony, priests suddenly collapse, indicating potential poisoning by the king, who abstained from drinking. Before succumbing, Priest curses the king. Returning to the present, the king's head begins to bleed and the throne trembles. Once the shaking ceases, he gazes upon the field, showing nothing but his fallen soldiers. Suddenly, he awakes, realizing it was all just a nightmare. Next, we find Team bound to a statue surprisingly still alive. Outside, noises indicate the arrival of some of Teen's comrades with their intent on rescuing him. However, one of them is swiftly incapacitated by a crow-like figure who effortlessly overpowers the rest. The king arrives, acknowledging the crow figure as an unparalleled fighter, and offers him a position in his service, promising anything he desires in return. The crow figure, dismissing the offer, insists there's nothing he seeks. Undeterred, the king throws him a bag of coins, asserting his dominance. Refusing to negotiate, the crow figure questions the king about recent nightmares, hinting at a curse haunting him indefinitely. Claiming to know the origin of the curse and possessing the sole ability to lift it, the crow figure incites the king's fury, leading him to demand Tien's execution the following day. The following morning, Tien appears exhausted and shackled to a podium as the executioner approaches, announcing the commencement of the execution. Suddenly, a horseback rider intervenes, brandishing a royal decree to halt the execution and claiming to be acting on the king's orders from Aothea. The king, disgusted, begrudgingly acknowledges the decree, questioning how Aothea could defy him in such a manner. His counsel suggests the presence of a traitor among them, reassuring the king the assassins have been dispatched to handle the situation. Abruptly, the king's vision blurs and a crow swoops right past him. Looking up, he witnesses his council members screaming curses at him, foretelling his miserable demise. In a fit of rage, the king seizes a sword from one of the councils and strikes him, momentarily losing touch with reality as he witnesses a swarm of crows overhead. Shortly after, the horseman and his entourage escort Tien to a village where the wounded are being tended to. Pim, curious about the newcomer, identifies him as Tien. Suddenly, explosions rock the village as three assassins materialize, targeting Tien. Despite the guards' efforts to defend him, they are overwhelmed. While the horseman dispatches the henchman, he struggles against the masked figure. The masked figure is able to take down the horseman when it all looks like it's game over. Out of nowhere, a bamboo strike. We are revealed that the traitor for the king was actually one of the councils. The opponent proving way too strong eliminates the horseman and the traitor, but they were able to slice his neck right before they were eliminated. Afterward, the village monk tends to Tian's injuries, informing Pim that Tian's trouble to pass is hindering his swift recovery. He suggests the creation of a symbol of faith to prolong Tian's life, hoping to appease his adversaries from the past life and guide his tormented soul back to his body. The villagers all come together to craft their own box statue, and with its completion, 
life returns back to Tian's body. Continuing to suffer under the unyielding curse, the king seeks out the crow figure to break the malicious spell. Arriving at a foreboding castle, the crow figure permits only the king's entry, barring his men from accompanying him inside. While inside, the crow figure, dripping with sarcasm, welcomes the king and administers a mysterious black shadow into the king's nostrils, demanding power and ownership of all the king's possessions. As the king succumbs to the agonizing ringing in his ears, he grabs a the sword and futilely attacks the crow figure, who remains impervious, claiming dominion over the power. The king is forcefully expelled from the castle and it commands his men to now eliminate the crow. Despite some guards staying to protect the king, the others swiftly fall to the crow's prowess. Death, the king orders the remaining guard to assassinate the crow figure, who effortlessly dodges their attack and even employs their own spears against them. With the guards defeated, the crow turns his attention to the king, perching on top of a pillar and asserting that power belongs to only the deserving. As the king readies his bow, the crow leaps forward aiming to decapitate him with a slash. In his final moments, the king curses the crow to endure a fate as miserable as his own. The crow figure now emerges triumphant because he is crowned as the new king. Back in the village, Tian engages in training when royal guards suddenly arrive to capture him. He swiftly dispatches the henchmen before facing off against the chief guard, who charges at him with his sword drawn. Tian evades the attack and counters, using nearby tree roots as improvised weapons to incapacitate the remaining henchmen. Rushing towards the main village, Tian is now greeted by a scene of devastation. Houses ablaze, bodies spread across the ground, with no survivors in sight. But luckily, the Ongbok statue is still there. As more soldiers approach, Tian parries their knife strike and defeats them with skillful martial arts maneuvers. Amidst the smoke, additional soldiers emerge to confront Tian, who defeats them barehanded. Standing beside the Ombok statue, Tian faces a soldier wielding a spear. Dodging the attack, he watches as the soldier inadvertently strikes the statue, leaving behind a distinctive mark. Tian swiftly dispatches the final soldier, ensuring his own survival. Arriving at the palace of the Crow King, the disturbing sight of slaves being mercilessly whipped greets the eye, with Pim and some villagers among them. Suddenly, a voice pierces through the chaos, commanding an end to this atrocity, revealing Tian on top of the statue. The Crow King acknowledges Tian's presence, remarking on his arrival. Tian asserts his determination to halt the Crow King's tyranny, to which the Crow King boasts his invincibility, claiming even the gods cannot challenge his power. As a solar eclipse unfolds, Pim is seized by a guard and presented before the Crow King. Standing beside the king, he cruelly pronounces Pim's imminent demise, swiftly slitting her throat. Tian, consumed by anguish, leaps into action, preparing for combat as the royal guards encircle him. Enraged, he savagely attacks the guards with primal fury. Using only his bare hands, he dispatches the ensuing guard, employing brutal techniques like his machine gun elbows to incapacitate them. As more guards join the fray, now mounted on top of elephant, Tian continues his onslaught. He launches himself off one elephant for a devastating knee strike. Then he grabs a hold of another elephant's tusk, using it to take out another rider. Scaling on top of the elephant, he swiftly deals with the remaining adversaries, determined to confront the Crow King's tyranny head on. Armed with a spear, Tian battles with unrestrained fury, thrusting and slashing through the guards with relentless force. As more guards emerge, he harnesses the elephant's strength to uproot the statue and hurls it at his adversary. Witnessing Tian's defiance, the Crow King hurls the spear directly at him, boasting of his ability to thrive on Tian's resentment and thirst for vengeance. With this spear through him, he claims Tian can never defeat him. Just when it looks like it's all over for Tian, he closes his eyes and then we are actually sent back to where it all began, right before when Pim was executed. But this time, in his core belief, recalls his origins and resolves to return to emptiness. With thunder echoing, a lightning strikes down the Crow King. As the solar eclipse fades, the guards tremble on the ground and the curse mark dissolves from the Crow King's skin. Tian emerges before him, now embodying the power of emptiness, engaging the Crow King with unparalleled grace and elegance. Tian finally confronts him with the mastery of his newfound strength. Engaged in a hand-to-hand -hand Tai Chi combat, Tian skillfully redirects the Crow King, sending him tumbling into a nearby water. As the water swirls around them, the Crow King is flung downward to a lower level, his fury driving punishing blows upon landing. 
Seizing the opportunity, he grabs a spear and hurls it at Tian, reminiscent of their previous encounter. This time though, Tian holds the spear with his bare hand, intensifying the Crow King's rage. Rushing at Tian, the Crow King is swiftly encountered and elevated by a single hand, teetering on the edge of the platform. Suddenly, Elephant strikes the platform, sending the Crow King plummeting to his demise. Tian's choice to embrace the path of emptiness instead of vengeance proves decisive, ultimately saving himself and his villagers from further harm. The film ends with the remaining villagers gathering to offer prayers of gratitude to the Ongbok statue.